Welcome, welcome, one and all, back to Color Party Plays Banjo Kazooie. We beat Mumbo's Mountain the first world last time, but you should probably already know that because I'm sure you watched that. Why would you watch it? Let's play videos out of order. Anyhow, today we're heading deeper into Grunty's Lair. Now that we got the Talon Trot from last world, we can climb up that slope and we reach the top here. Hey, Bob, what's up? This is a note door sealed by Grunty with one of her powerful musical spells. Open it up then, jam jars. It's not that simple. To open it, you must collect the musical notes from the worlds. How many do we need? The number on the door is the strength of the spell. The combined total of all your best note scores from the worlds must be at least this to break Grunty's magic. So, we needed to get a high score of at least 50 notes on Mumbo's Mountain to open this door. We got all 100, so we are good. Alright, let's head deeper in. That door was easy you got past. Unfortunately, you're first and last. So, this is quite the room, huh? We've got... Ooh, nice green light on the ceiling. I don't think I ever noticed that. Uh, that is a grunt lane. One of the mooks or grunts that Grunty employs. There he used to be. You can just roll into them. Grunty mosaic on the floor. Grunty's pretty vain. She's got herself featured a lot in her lair. Hello there, young ones. I'm Brentilda, Gruntilda's nicer sister. I've crept down here to help you defeat the old hag. It's about time she was taught a lesson. I know all of Grunty's disgusting secrets, and I'll tell you free of them every time you find me. Remember them well, young ones, as they will help you avoid a fiery fate. Press B if you'd like to hear them. <laughs> Grunty's sister. Oh yeah, she's so nice. She's gonna gossip about her sister and tell you all of her deepest, darkest, dirtiest secrets. Sounds real nice, Brentilda. Anyhow. Join me now and dump the bear. That little backpack, then I'll wear. Okay. Grunty brushes her rotten teeth with salted slug flavored toothpaste. She also washes her hair with engine oil. Yuck! And she gets her clothes from Saggy Maggie's boutique. Yeah, you actually do want to find her and get all the secrets because they actually will play a role towards the end of the game. So just keep that in mind. Anyhow, oh, there's a tunnel down here. Wonder where this goes. It's a cauldron. You've activated a magic cauldron. Find two the same color to create a shortcut. So Grunty's layer is very big, so these function as little teleporters that you can use once you find them. Also, behind this guy, it's a mobo token. Also, I'll say it again. I've said it before, I'll say it pretty much every video. Banjo Kazooie has amazing music, but I really love Grunty's layer's music. What is this? This is Kazooie's shock jump disc. Find me and I'll tell you how to use it. And there's another portrait over here. To remove pieces that you have already put down, press the down C button. But once the picture is complete, all the pieces are stuck there permanently. That's fine. And this opens the world, the door to World 2, Treasure Trove Cove. Many people's favorite world in the game, and it's definitely one of mine. It's awesome. Anyhow, let's go further into the lair. Now we've got a room with crabs on the wall. Sewer pipes, ooh. That's a nice looking sewer pipe. A 180 note door that we need to open. And then, clips. All right, well, let's swim in here, shall we? And it leads to a dead end. However, there's a hole in this pipe. Let's get out of here. It's a dingy little sewer room, but there's another cauldron. You activated a magic cauldron. Find two of the same color to create a shortcut. So the first cauldron we found was like a hot pink, and this one is red. They are a different color. Which is good, because that would be a pretty pathetic shortcut, all things considered. 
Another Momo token back here. And nothing we can do there. That's another dead end. Grunty's very fond of dead ends. Lucky you! I'm an invulnerability feather! Bottles will tell you more! Well, not for a while. That ugly bear, your feathered freak, is nothing but a stupid geek! <laughs> Thanks for insulting us in rhyme form, Grunty. Real nice. So we could high jump up into this pipe, but that only leads to a dead end. That leads to a future world. We don't have enough notes to go from there. You found some notes, but you need more to break my spell and pass this door. All right, thanks, Grunty. So the pipe feeds into a waterfall, to a small lake, and there's a tunnel at the bottom of this. I wonder where this could lead. We've got a forest area and the music has changed. Every time you enter, every time you go near a world or a world opener, the music in Grunty's Lair, oh, the music in Grunty's Lair changes to reflect the world. And we just got a one up. Well, that is missing a lot of jigsaw pieces, isn't it? Click clock wood. This is the final world. This is the world opener to the final world, but there's no jiggy pedestal. What a conundrum. How do we fix that? Hey, That's the cool question. Mumbo token back there. And there's another Brentilda here. <laughs> Ugly Grunty's nickname was Jelly Belly at which school? I also know that putrid parrot puke is her favorite smell. Ew. And the old hag's favorite color is ghastly gray. Okay. Thanks, that was gross. I don't want to or need to know all that. Actually, I might need to know all that. Anyhow, there's nothing we can do here, but just remember this exists, because we will have to come back there eventually and to open up the final world. And fun f <laughs> Well, no, I'll, I'll get into the fun story later on in the game. But there's a funny story I have regarding that. And here we are. This is the lobby for Treasure Trove Cove. We'll explore more of that after we're done with the world. But first, always look behind the world openers. Oh, okay. Nothing there. Let's enter Treasure Trove Cove. Some of my favorite music on this course. Ahoy there! This be Treasure Trove Cove! Thar be two new moves for ye to find! So this world is significantly larger than the first world, and also quite a bit tougher. This, this is probably my favorite music in the whole game, at least in terms of the world music. The Treasure Trove Cove, it's a giant beach slash cove, and it has a nautical pirate theme. That's pretty cool. And there's a blue Jinjo underwater. So let's just jump in and grab it, shall we? Snacker smells tasty dinner. Stay just there. Yeah, so the gimmick for this world, or the main gimmick, is that going in the water will summon this shark who will chase you down and try to eat you. If he eats you, you will take damage. Oh, hi. This is a snipper. Or a snippet, actually. You can just roll into it once to flip it over, then roll into it again in order to take it out. So yeah, there will be times where, like there, where we will have to go in the water and we'll have to be quick about it or else Snacker's gonna damage us. We. I'm a red feather. I help Kazooie fly when she knows how. I wonder what we're going to learn in this world. Oh, giant crab. Hey, bro, what's up? Hey, this Nipper's Beach. You find nothing without Nipper's help. Help us then, crustacean brain. Uh, cheeky bird need feathers clipping. Oh yeah? Just try it, Shellhead! So this is like a mild boss fight. Wait for him to stop nipping, and then rat a rabbit. Rawr, you hurt, Nipper. Makes me mad. Ooh. 
pretty easy fight. And we can enter his shell now. Hey, Nipper, I know I just beat you up, but let's be friends. <laughs> no. Also, holy cow, Nipper's shell is a whole lot bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside. I also like how it's like literally a spiral shell. Oh, hi. Is this Nipper now? Fun fact, you can you can kill the snippets in one hit by just doing the Brigo Blaster on it. Or the, the Beak Blaster? I can't even remember the name of it. Yeah, a single ground pound is enough to just kill them. And they drop twice as much honeycomb that way. Pretty nice. And this is our first Jiggy of the world. Alrighty. I don't know where Nipper went, but <laughs> he just disintegrated when he went inside his shell. Honestly, the toughest part of this world is the finding all the hollow honeycomb pieces. The two hollow honeycomb pieces are pretty well hidden on this level. The trees inside the cove will have notes on them. The ones outside will have red feathers on them. This is Artie's tip of the day. Yarr. It's a clam. Hi, bro. Look, nice snacks for yum yum. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll show you. Ooh, nice snack for Banjo. Like I said in an earlier episode, Rattatai Rap deals twice as much damage as the Claw Swipe or the Roll. So I like using that whenever I can. What are you crying for, dude? Oh, he burps as his me. Who is the hell that blubber? And I lost me treasure when he ship crashed. Well, go find it then, blubber guts. I can't swim. Can you help me to see him? Sure, we'll find it for you. I love how Banjo is like the really nice guy, and then Kazooie's just the foul mouthed, like. <laughs> I don't want to say Sundere, but like, just like the foul mouthed partner is just like insults everybody. They, they make a good duo. Alright, so we can destroy part of his ship to go down here. This water will not have the shark in it. So you can take your time here, and this is where I do recommend using Banjo's kick. And remember, you do have an air supply. If you run low on air, then you can swim to the surface. Honestly, the hardest part of this is just the bad camera angle. And there's some gold down here. Let's pick that up. Oh, he's there. I need Blubber's treasure. Blubber's treasure can talk. Now we do a high jump. Off the crate, and we're back on the ship. We can climb up this pole to get a mumbo token. Very useful that. Stop grabbing onto the pole, Banjo! I be half only gold. I'm still very depressed that I don't have it all now. Then we can swim underwater through this window. get to the other half of the ship hold, where the other half of his treasure is. I don't know how he split it up and put it in two different parts of the ship and he's like, I don't know where it is and I can't get it anyway, so grab it for me. That is definitely Bulber's voice. Yeah, I, I don't want it to. <laughs> it's like... It's like nautical Donald Trump. Yo, I, I'm gonna make the best jobs. Do the greatest jobs. Anyways, no one wants to hear about that. Here you go, Blubber. Oh. Here you go, Blubber. <laughs> I have to walk over there. Me treasure, they key me hearties. Take this reward. I'm off to spend, spend, spend. Alright, uh, I wish you happiness. Don't think you'll find it just through monetary value, though. <laughs> Second Jiggy, nice. Now on drop up the rigging. 
Okay, it's a disc. This is a flying disc, but you'll have to find my molehill before you can use it. Slowly go down the reed so we can get all the notes. And then there's a molehill right here. I wonder what move we're going to learn. This is your big chance, chicken legs. It's time for you to fly. At last, it better be easy, bog eyes. Simple enough even for you, bird brain. Just stand on a flying disc and press A. Here's 25 red feathers to help you into the air. See ya. Also, if we climb up the rest of the mast, it's the green ginger. Awesome. So flying is relatively simple. So we press A and then we'll be flying. To fly higher, you'll need some red feathers. Press A to use one, but remember that Beaky can only carry 50 of them. Other than that, you use... Oh, it's left to go left, up to go down, and down to go up to aim up. Ouch! That was so rude. It be Snacker gets dessert too. Also, yeah, if you if you poop eggs on him, you can actually damage him, which is hilarious. Ah, cheese and crackers. Just eat me for your dinner. <laughs> Take that, Snacker. All right, well I got my mumbo token, so ah, he spotted right for me. Coffee and mints. I'll be right over. Uh, shut up, Snacker. Wow, he can, he's a shark with superpowers. He can literally phase in and out of existence at will. That's amazing. Anyhow, what I was trying to do <laughs> was fly over to this treasure chest, but I hit his teeth and it knocked me off. Yeah, you can use the ground pound to just quickly stop flying, otherwise you'll have to fly into the ground. This big red Tilda's booty. Touch it if you dare. So there are these evil treasure chests. What we have to do is high jump into them while they have their mouth open. So you have to time it a little before you actually jump, before they open up in order to get inside. Easy enough. That golden treasure was for me. Now harder still the game will be. For those of you who are wondering, that doesn't actually increase the difficulty of the game. It doesn't do anything. Although she is right, because the game does get harder after the second world, as you would expect. Oop. Also, fun little fact is the more damage you've so you've got the Banjo Kazooie icon at the top. They're pretty happy right now. The more damage you take, the less happy they get. And when you're at like one HP, they're like, <laughs> really upset. It's pretty awesome.